Okay, good evening, everyone. Hopefully you can all hear me okay. Uh, I'm Mark Jackson, the board president, and uh, we are doing this meeting by uh, video conference tonight, uh, something very different for us. Uh, so if you'll bear with me, I'm going to uh, uh, read you some text, uh, some direction we've gotten from uh, the governor's office in the state of Texas on how to conduct uh, our open meetings uh, during this time of COVID-19. Uh, I will note that we officially opened the meeting at 5 p.m. and immediately went into closed session and uh, talked about the typical things uh, uh, under uh, personnel and so forth. So uh, we're now reconvening back into open session and uh, wanted to again just give you a few bullet points on uh, how we're going to conduct the meeting tonight. Uh, on March 16th, uh, Governor Greg Abbott uh, granted a request from the Attorney General's office uh, from Ken Paxton to temporarily suspend uh, the limited number of open meetings laws that uh, do affect us uh, and how they would affect telephonic or, or uh, video conference meetings such as uh, we're having tonight. And this was all in response to uh, COVID-19. So in accordance with those rules, we do certify the following. Uh, the notice of this meeting was posted online for at least 72 hours. And uh, we do have uh, all the members uh, uh, present in this virtual meeting. Although I will note, we are not gathered in a central or physical location. But again, we do have a, a quorum in attendance for this meeting by uh, video conference tonight. Uh, as you know, we're using the, uh, the Zoom software application and it does allow for some two-way communication. And you'll see some other speakers here uh, uh, shortly. Um, we did not have uh, members of the public sign up for public comment tonight. We accommodated that by email when we posted this meeting and uh, invited folks to sign up up until about 5.30 uh, this evening and uh, no one has signed up for, for public comment uh, for this meeting. Uh, you'll see that we're gonna uh, uh, adhere to our meeting procedures uh, uh, that the board has long adopted uh, and so as practical as can be, we're, we'll, we'll continue to use Robert's rules and kind of conduct the meeting like we normally do. Um, an audio recording of the meeting is being made and it will be made available to the public at a later date. So uh, whether you're viewing this live or have to leave, uh, you certainly welcome to view it at a later time. Um, so with that, again, we have uh, convened into open session. And at this time, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Barbara Harrington if she can come on and deliver an invocation for us tonight. Dr. Harrington, are you, are you on yet? I haven't seen her on yet, uh, Mr. Jackson. Uh, if you are on, uh, Dr. Harrington, you may have to unmute your mic. Unmute it. Uh, oh. Let me pop up over here. Oh, there you are. We can hear you, Barbara. Okay. But you don't see your video. Here, click on these right here. Oh, okay. Start video. <laughs> I have a little help here, as you can hear. <laughs> you all will get my bill. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I can hear. I can. Uh, Dr. Harrington, you may not see any of our pictures. You probably are looking at the Granberry logo, and it says Granberry ISD Board Meeting, April twentieth. That, that's really all you're going to see. Uh, but we can certainly hear you, so you're welcome to to deliver the invocation. Are you ready for it? Yes, ma'am, please. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, in these strange and difficult times, we know you're there. We only wish that we could zoom in to you sometimes. And sometimes I feel like I do, and sometimes I feel like the connection is not there. God, we ask you to be with these teachers as they continue to serve these kids the rest of this year. Be with these parents who are struggling with their 
new normal, I guess we'd call it. God, they've given so much. The teachers have given so much. The central office staff has been so supportive. But with each and every one of those, God, we know that you are there. We thank you for that. We ask that you go with us the rest of this year. Help us finish this year out, out pirate strong. And God, give each and every one of us the grace and the understanding to know that this is your plan, even though we may not see it, we may not understand it, that we will all be closer to you when this is all over. We thank you again for all of your grace and all of your love. These things we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Harrington. Uh, at this time, uh, and, and I appreciate folks uh, bearing with us. Uh, this obviously is a first for us, uh, but we've got some excellent technical people, uh, namely Amy, Amy Wood in the background and, and uh, Jeff Metter. Uh, and at this time, I'm going to ask if they had the American flag to go ahead and put that up. We do. Uh, we would like to recite the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If you would follow me, I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, America. and to, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible. indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And just, just to break here, Amy, I'm not hearing anybody else, just Dr. Harrington and myself. I don't know if you want to enable everyone. It might be nice to hear all our voices on the pledges. And the Texas Pledge. Um, Honor the Texas Flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state God, one indivisible. Thank you, everyone. I know it sounds a little bit off, but uh, it means a lot to hear hear the many voices in the district. Uh, and again, welcome to tonight's meeting. Uh, I don't see that we have a, a public spotlight or academic spotlight tonight, uh, uh, and I know that's unfortunate. This is uh, uh, this is our uh, favorite part of the meeting. I think I can speak for the board safely on that. We certainly love to hear uh, and see uh, all the uh, students and, and staff in the district and their great achievements. So. Uh, with that said, we'll go ahead and go on to item eight of our agenda tonight. Uh, these are consent items. These are the kind of routine matters in our board book. Uh, uh, it looks like Dobie uh, has probably some comment on some of these and certainly Dr. Glenn, uh, if you want to lead the discussion, anything that we need to know on these consent items. No, Mr. Jackson, you uh, have the standard uh, consent agenda items uh, in front of you tonight, board. Uh, again, they begin with our, our budget amendments, uh, minutes from our, our previous meetings, and then uh, probably the biggest one would be the uh, uh, board calendar for next year. And again, uh, with so much uncertainty right now, some of the summer items uh, could shift and change. Uh, but if you'd like to look through that, uh, we, we certainly would appreciate your approval on it tonight. Dr. Harrington, would you like to comment on uh, a particular budget amendment? Oh, I need to un unmute. I'm un unmute. There you go. Go ahead, Dr. Harrington. I think you're on. Oh, no. Okay, am I on now? All right. There you are. Woohoo for Acton Elementary PTO. $70,000 for a new playground out there. Boy, what a great thing. It's such a shame the whole community is not here to see it. But uh, Carla and her kids made out well this time. So thank you, PTO. 
Thank you, Dr. Harrington. I, I know uh, you did such a great job of uh, thanking our, our community and our parents and especially our PTOs out there and all the community uh, organizations that donate to the district. Uh, we got some great partners and thank you for pointing that out. At, at this time, uh, I'll entertain uh, a motion to uh, accept the consent items. This is Barbara Townsend. I move that we accept the consent items uh, presented today. I'll second the motion. Thank you. We have a uh, motion made by Ms. Townsend and a second by Ms. Solana to accept the consent agenda items as presented tonight. Uh, all those in favor, I think I can see the board. We can try by a raise of hand. If I can see your hand in the picture, perhaps. Uh, Chris Willis. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, the motion passes uh, unanimously. I have a terrible internet connection right now. I apologize so much. Not a problem. Slight delay there. Uh, okay, we're on to item 8B, approved board resolution for modification of policies and procedures on grading and related issues. Uh, Dr. Glenn. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as you know, the, the COVID-19 crisis has is, is caused a lot of disruptions uh, for us as an ISD. Um, one of the uh, major disruptions has been in the grading process. Uh, you know, our teachers have done a fabulous job of providing uh, instructional continuity to students. Uh, we continue to provide home learning and virtual learning, both high and low tech options. Uh, however, one of the hurdles that many districts across the state are dealing with uh, comes with grading. Uh, how do we determine grades? How do we determine class rank? Uh, how do we determine GPA? And so based on the guidance we've received from TASB, the, the guidance we've received from uh, TEA and uh, just uh, you know, doing our due diligence, seeing what other districts across the state, uh, not only in the, the ISD, but also at the university level are doing, uh, we put together a, a grading uh, policy uh, for the, that'll run the duration of this pandemic, but basically it allows a GPA to be calculated uh, through the four, six weeks. And then for this time that students are off virtual learning, uh, everything will be on a pass fail basis. So it's no free ride to students. Uh, they're gonna have to per, uh, participate in virtual learning to get credit. And we'll certainly have to look at alternatives for kids that refuse to participate. But in conversations with the principals right now, probably close to 98% of our kids are somewhat engaged. Uh, obviously probably 90% are actively engaged at a high level. Uh, some are just getting by, but uh, there is about 2% that, that are not participating. We continue to try and reach them. But tonight, we would ask that you approve the grading guidelines as presented. Uh, you have the full details in your packet, and then earlier today, I sent you a text that just kind of gives you an outline and synopsis. Uh, and then also, we have uh, Sharon Williams, Amy Wood, and Ron Holmgren uh, all available to answer questions, and I want to give uh, all of them credit uh, for really working hard to develop these guidelines. And in the process, the process for it uh, did involve uh, teachers uh, and uh, administration. Yes, Mr. Swearingen. Yes, uh, just for clarification, I know that there are going to be some some people looking at this that maybe don't know the you know nuts and bolts of how people are going to get uh, credit for this year, and uh, you know valedictorian, salutatorian uh, rankings, and all those other kind of things. Is there any uh, information available to them? I, I know I, we've, we've, we have received what we needed from this, and we know, you know, what you're doing, and, and, and it looks great, but uh, maybe a, a brief synopsis for, for the, the, uh, the general public on this would be in order. Yes, yes, sir. I believe uh, Jeff Metter, uh, and if, Amy, if you'll unmute Jeff, I believe uh, Jeff Metter has it up on the district website, and I'll let him uh, speak to the plan, district's plans to communicate this to the parents and community. Jeff, are you there? It's on our uh, coronavirus uh, website now. Uh, www.granburyisd.org slash coronavirus uh, under the instruction tab and basically it outlines the uh, 
in very simple terms, the uh, the three uh, or uh, policy modifications that class rank for seniors will be determined by uh, grades through the four six weeks grades for uh, current GHS juniors, sophomores, and freshmen uh, will be pass or fail on transcripts. The GPAs for uh, current juniors, sophomores, and freshmen will not include the spring 2020 semester. Instead, uh, going forward, just these students will be calculated on seven semesters while they're in high school. And finally, that advanced academic credits will be awarded for all students passing the courses during the spring 2020. Now, that, was a, that was a very good question, Mr. Swearingen. I think uh, Amy Wood is gonna try and bring that up on the screen too. Yeah, and, and Dr. Glenn, as this is coming up, uh, is, it, is it fair to say that uh, we're following pretty, pretty uh, uh, carefully thought out guidance from the TEA and what probably the vast majority of the school districts are doing in the state and, and in concert or collaboration, as you mentioned with our, our locally, with our own campus principals and your administrative team? Uh, is it fair to say that, that that's basically what we've got here? Yes, sir. And so on uh, the TEA website, so if you go to tea.texas.gov slash coronavirus, uh, they do give some general guidelines uh, to grading. Ultimately, uh, they've, they've really kind of gone with the premise it's a local matter, uh, but certainly uh, they, do, they do give you some general guidance uh, and they've uh, been good about that. Uh, and then doing our due diligence, uh, looking through plans from other districts and certainly even our higher ed partners, uh, that's where we came up with uh, this policy. Yes, sir. Okay. And again, the, the, the other point I, I want to emphasize is, is this is a pivot for COVID-19. I mean, this is really a temporary measure, as you can see in the resolution, uh, that we have full expectation of returning back to our normal grading policy for the next school year. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So uh, if, you're thinking, if you're thinking long and short term, so short term it affects the seniors and class ranking, and, and as Mr. Swearingen mentioned, Val and Sal, uh, that, will, uh, uh, that will cut off at the end of the four, six weeks. So when we left for spring break, we'll calculate GPA up until that day. And, uh, and from that point on, um, our current juniors, sophomores, and freshmen uh, their, their transcripts will always reflect basically a pass fail, uh, credit, no credit uh, for the remainder of time they're in school. And then everything else will, will return to normal in the fall. We right. pray. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Good, good question. Thank you, Bob. Does anyone else have a question, uh, Ms. Townsend? Um, on number six, uh, the board determines that a temporary modification of board policy will be implemented to suspend the requirement to issue grading reports every six weeks, as well as discretionary interim progress reports. However, notice of a student's consistent unsatisfactory performance shall be issued in accordance with law. How is that notification going to be given? Oh, the notification to, to parents uh, on progress reports. Right now, the teacher the teachers are handling it uh, through their classrooms. I don't know if we have a, and I may get Ron, if you'll unmute your mic, I'm not sure the progress report itself is being sent out, but I know we, had, we have a three week and six week requirement. Ron? Yes, uh, hey, currently uh, our district policy is every six weeks. And so what we did is we amended it with the report cards. We were able to get report cards out this past week, which was actually the seventh week. Uh, in regards to progress reports, uh, we were able to send those out electronically to, uh, to all the parents who do have it. And those who do not, we're able to mail them out to them as well. Uh, this is primarily looking at those that are falling uh, under the passing rate. And uh, they're required to get one, and we will make sure that we do get those to them. Um, but then everything else is done electronically on Skyward, or uh, or we can mail it home if the parent wishes. So, 
So, so right, right now, teachers put the grades in and teachers, uh, uh, parents can go on to Skyward and look, but Ron, correct me if, correct me if I'm wrong. We have, we have not sent out a, here is, here's the progress report for the third six or the, the middle of the six weeks. Correct. It's not, it's probably another week or two before, before it would be, uh, be ready to go. And then we'll, it'll be mailed out or, or up on Skyward for anybody. Yes, any sir. Parents of you. Does that, does that yes, answer sir. your question, Ms. Her Ms. Towns? Yes, thank you. Okay. Again, it, this, this new policy will, will be uh, uh, communicated out to the public and, and to our parents uh, and available on the website, it sounds like, under the coronavirus link uh, for, for one place. I'm sure it'll be out there uh, under our policies as well. Um, any other questions or comments on uh, this grading policy? If not, I'll go Mr. ahead and- Mr. President? Uh-huh. Uh Mr. President, I move that we approve the, um, hang on a minute. I had it right here. Sorry. Okay, Huckabee. I, I, I move that we approve the resolution um, as presented to us on the agenda. And I'll second that. Thank you, Ms. Solana, for the motion and uh, Mr. Willis for the second. Any other comment or question? All right, all those in favor, let's try to raise a hand again. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you for that. Item C tonight, uh, consider approval of amendment to the AIA uh, BI 101-2017 standard form of agreement between owner and architect. And uh, Dr. Glenn, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, and the AIA document is just the architectural agreement uh, for the Chiller sister at Act Chiller system at Acton Elementary School. So uh, we talked about this uh, a couple of months ago, I think right before spring break, but uh, the chiller system, uh, which provides our, our, our air conditioning at Acton uh, has been on the fritz and uh, it finally is, is gone out. And so we'll be replacing that entire system, but uh, it's, not, it's not your standard, just bring a, another unit in and put it on the roof. The whole system has to be replaced, it does. Uh, uh, require an architect uh, to uh, engineer the design and uh, the scope of the work uh, is uh, laid out for you in this agreement. And so it'll be the recommendation tonight that we approve uh, Huckabee as the, uh, the architect uh, to design and engineer the chiller system, ch chiller system for Acton Elementary School. Okay, we have a pretty straightforward uh, uh, proposal. Any questions or comments? This is uh, one of those, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead, Dr. Glenn, please. No, I was just gonna say, this is, this is one of those you don't get a lot of uh, uh, kudos for right now, but in August, you'll definitely hear about it if it's not done. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah, we've got to have air conditioning. That's, that's a necessity. I'm uh, just not real, clear on why the architect you know is is so important to this process um uh, yeah yeah so uh any uh te texas law says uh anytime you're looking at a project uh, over eight thousand uh, dollars you have to have have it engineered and so we have to bring an engineer in okay probably got it for you all right I, I didn't know that I'll see if I can pull uh, while we're sitting here the exact policy. And and Mr. Swearinger, just so you know, uh, we use Huckabee and Associates uh, on our 2013 uh, bond initiative. Uh, so they engineered all the uh, work at the high school and out the campuses, including the conversion of the uh, admin building uh, where Dr. Glenn is at. So. I think it's safe to say we're pretty pleased with, uh, with their work and have used them uh, several times over the years. Yeah, I, I just didn't know about that policy and, and if, that's, if that's standard operating procedures and by golly, we ought to do it. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be uh, policy CV legal. 
Mr. President, I would like to move that we approve uh, Huckabee as the uh, uh, architect on the project for the chiller to replace the chiller system there at Acton Elementary. I will second that. Thank you, Ms. Solana, for the motion and uh, Ms. Townsend for the second and uh, for the questions on this. And uh, I, I don't know if there are any other questions or comment at this time. Okay, all those in favor by a show of hand. And okay, uh, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, on to considering the pre-licensing documents and procedures for our Little Buccaneers Child Care Center. Dr. Glenn. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Jackson. And this one, I'm actually gonna turn over to our uh, director for our child care facility, uh, Tiffany Rodriguez, uh, who's been great uh, at the forefront of this and been great about providing uh, timely information. And uh, I'll turn it over for her report. And, and I'll also be emailing you at this time, uh, CB Legal. Um, good evening, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right, um, so the documents that I've given you are just some forms that um, need to be completed as we're moving forward to get uh, the license for the facility. And um, the first one I believe that you've seen, or the first one that I have on my screen is the, the governing body document. Um, the governing body document is basically just saying that the person who, see, so who oversees the day-to-day -day operations of the facility um, fills out this form. I think that one's coming up. Yes. So the, um, the governing body, it's the government, governing body is defined as the entity with ultimate authority and responsibility for the day-to-day -day operations. And since I'm overseeing the facility, um, I would be the governing body that kind of makes those day-to-day -day decisions, um, you know, based on enrollment and the teachers that we have there doing the interviewing and scheduling and things like that. Um, the document is called the controlling persons document which would actually be filled out um, by the board of directors um, or the board members and probably Dr. Glenn. This is basically saying the controlling person is someone who has the authority to make decisions about the facility. Let's say we had to replace the air conditioner or replace the roof, things like that that needs to be approved by the board that's where the controlling person comes into play. So you would be the controlling people that make those decisions. So this is just a piece of paper that I turn into licensing that basically says that, you know, Mark Jackson has the authority to make these decisions or the board of directors as a whole has the authority to make these decisions. Um, and then the last document that I gave you is just our parent handbook, which includes all of the requirements and kind of our rules and policies that we'll be following and basically they all follow Texas minimum standards for child care licensing. Tiffany? Yes. Uh, did, how did you come about putting together the uh, parent handbook? Um, so I used a couple of different resources through Minimum Standards, which is a, a book full of all kinds of policies and regulations that um, child care licensing says that we have to follow. Um, within that Minimum Standards book, it tells you certain things that you have to do, like you have to have certain ratios, you have to tell parents um, what your release uh, procedures are, what your pickup procedures are, what your sick policy is. Um, and then also through the research that I did back in the fall, all of the districts I visited, um, they provided me with their parent handbooks and just kind of the things that they're doing um, so that I had kind of an example to follow. But everything in the parent handbook is pretty much, I mean, it's minimum standards based, what we have to do um, and the things that we have to tell the parents and let them know kind of how we're handling things at the child care facility. Thank you. I, I'm with you about not reinventing the wheel. So <laughs> yes, ma'am. Tiffany, this is Barbara Townsend. Um, and I read through this and I have worked with other daycares before with our church and all. 
And this was very well put together parent handbook. Every question I was going to make sure was covered was taken care of and here you did a great job. Thank you so much. I put a lot of time into that because I really want to make sure that this facility is, is great for our teachers and great for our staff. And I wanted to make sure you know that we're clear on our policies and letting the parents know that we're definitely going to take really good care of their kiddos. Tiffany, uh, Ms. Townsend just stole my thunder completely. I, <laughs> I, uh, I can remember your initial presentation to the board last fall, uh, last year, and uh, you're, you're very professional, very thorough, and I too uh, read through this handbook. It's excellent, and uh, I look forward to that center opening, and I uh, can't wait. I, I'm just curious, uh, how many do we have? Uh, do we have an idea of how many pre-registered kiddos at this point? Um, yes, actually, I received two more enrollment forms today, so we have 35 children enrolled, um, and wow. I've several people that have contacted me, and they just haven't gotten everything to me yet, but um, enrollment's going up pretty good. I'm excited about it. Well, thank you for what you've done and, and uh, whomever has supported you, and, and I know the admin team certainly has supported you, but uh, you've been at the helm and done a great job, and, and we really look forward to this center opening. Uh, I, I think I've said it before, and I know the board would echo, uh, this is a great uh, kind of employee benefit. I know there's, there's a fee that they're paying, but, uh, you know, in good time, I would certainly like to entertain uh, supplementing that as, as much as we can as a school district, because uh, this truly is a great benefit to put out there for our staff. So thank you so much. Definitely. You're welcome. Yeah, too. Tiffany's done an amazing job on it. And I know two years ago uh, when Ms. Alana was president, you know, she challenged us to, to find a, a use for that facility. And we were hoping to do a grand opening next month. I, I don't know that that's uh, gonna happen now, but uh, it's, it's really been a, a remarkable uh, a transition for that building and high school students pitching in, our, our maintenance and facilities team has done a great job. And Tiffany's been in charge of it all. So great job, Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you. Okay, and at this time, uh, it does look like uh, we need to take action on this as a board. So I'll entertain uh, approving these uh, licensing documents as well as the procedures and the uh, parent handbook. Mr. President, it's Dr. Harrington here, and I move that we uh, authorize the, the completion of all the pre licensing documents and procedures to the Little Buccaneers Child Care as presented by uh, Ms. Rodriguez tonight. And this is Barbara Townsend. I would second that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Harrington, for the motion and uh, Ms. Townsend for that second. And uh, really not seeing any further question or comment. Uh, it was a good presentation. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And the motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. We'll look forward to that opening. Uh, someday we'll all get there in person, so. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tiffany. Uh, Dr. Glenn, at this time, we're in the, the report section of the meeting tonight, so go ahead and take it away, sir. Yeah, thank you, uh, board. And I, and I don't think that I'm gonna tell you anything you, you don't already know tonight, but since it's, uh, been a month since our, our last meeting. I do want to uh, I do want to kind of recap uh, what's happened uh, since uh, we uh, first called school out for spring break. And and as soon as uh, we had to make the decision to call school, and we realized that it was going to be longer than a week, um, our cafeteria staff, led by Amy Parker, and just just a phenomenal staff, mobilized. They are now serving over a thousand meals every day, hot lunches to students. Uh, from there, uh, Amy Wood and her technology staff and our campus principals uh, mobilized uh, well over 3,000 Chromebooks to be given to students. Uh, our campus principals and our teaching staff uh, came up with both high-tech and low-tech uh, systems of virtual instruction for students for, for nearly 7,500 kids. And, and again, with a 98% with a uh, participation rate and, and growing, uh, you have administrators that are dedicated to reaching every single one of our kids. And so I say all that to say that, that we are blessed in Granbury ISD. We have an amazing uh, uh, team of, of teachers and staff that really rallied 
uh, to be a leader in, in the state of Texas when it comes to, to home learning and virtual education. And uh, now we find ourselves in a position, I saw uh, Dobie Williams right before the meeting and we were having a conversation about other schools calling us to find out what we're doing because we've gotten so far out ahead of this. Uh, it's not the type of situation you want to find yourself in, but uh, I would be remiss tonight if I didn't give uh, credit where it's due, and that's to our staff. Our, our teachers uh, are, are absolutely amazing. Um, our counselors, our principals, um, our maintenance workers, our cafeteria workers, just God, God bless them for what they've done because uh, they mobilized and rallied fast to put strong systems in place to take care of our kids. And uh, had we not had a staff that rallied so, so quickly, you would have kids that, that would have went hungry. You would have had kids that wouldn't have been safe. You would have had kids that, that would have had huge achievement gaps in their learning. And, and we know we've got a long road ahead of us, but uh, I think uh, credit has to go to our staff first and foremost. Uh, we also have partners that have rallied with us. Uh, I think it's important tonight to recognize uh, Jay Webster. He is the uh, uh, head of the Hood County Emergency, uh, I, Emergency Management Coordinator. Uh, we've been working with him, uh, the city, the county, the hospital. Uh, we have worked to get out a lot of medical supplies. Uh, we've worked to get out a lot of uh, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, Clorox wipes, uh, masks, uh, uh, PPE to the hospital. I mean, anytime we were called, we tried to rally and, and really be there for the hospital, the county and the city. Um, and then our teachers started coming along rallying too. And I just wanted to take a minute to share, and I shared with the admin team this morning, but Todd Gibson now is making uh, these, uh, with his 3D printer, he's making these masks for uh, Granbury uh, uh, Police Department, also the Sheriff's Office and our first responders. And so you probably can't see it, but I'm gonna take it out because what it is, is it's a reusable 3D mask. And so you just pop, pop, the, uh, pop the filter out. And so you see this one's damaged now, and you can just pull it out and then you just replace it with a replace it with a new filter. Obviously, that one's damaged. For example, replace it with a new filter, and you punch it back in. So, uh, Todd Gibson, if he's on the call tonight, uh, he's been phenomenal. Uh, but really, all of our elementary principals rallied to get him uh, more 3D printers uh, so that he could mass produce these things for our first responders. And, uh, and it's not just been us giving out, uh, we've received a lot back. Uh, so there are ladies in Pecan Plantation and Jay Webster actually sent these masks to me uh, for our cafeteria workers. And I, we're giving them out now to our staff, but our cafeteria ladies got them as well. But ladies out of Pecan Plantation uh, made masks for our staff knowing that we gave our supply uh, to the Granbury Police Department and to the hospital, and they knew our staff would need masks as well. So it is, uh, it is great to live in Granbury. It's great to live in a community that has rallied together, and uh, we thank you uh, as, as a cooperative board for your support. Uh, we, we are blessed. The Lord has looked over us in this situation, and uh, it's going to be a tough four weeks, but I, I know that we have the people in place to get through this. Thank you, Dr. Glenn. I, uh, I, I don't know what to say or where to start. I, I, I know all the trustees uh, feel so blessed that we have you out in the league. Uh, thank you for all your hard work, all the hours that I know you're putting in, and uh, you and your team uh, in, in uh, each campus level, everyone is just doing phenomenal. Uh, but your leadership, your, your complete and thorough and timely communications, uh, have been uh, uh, just great. And so thank you. Uh, we, we thank you for that. Well, we, I, I appreciate that. But on, on behalf of the staff, I'll say you guys stepping up at the very beginning of this and improving res resolutions to make sure that our staff uh, would receive their, their paychecks, they would get paid, they would receive their benefits, those things that would continue. <laughs> I think I can speak for everybody on this call. That reassurance gave us the confidence to move forward. So to each one of you, we extend our, our appreciation as well. Thank you. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll move on. We'll give uh, Dobie an opportunity to grab the microphone. Uh, Dobie, you've got a report for us on some change orders approved. That these were part of our campus projects. And then if you'd like, go ahead and roll into your uh, monthly financial reports. Okay, good evening, uh, Mr. Jackson, Board of Trustees. Uh, and I wanna, I wanna reiterate what Dr. Glenn just said. Thank you so much for what you've done for our staff. You, you really don't know how much we appreciate that. 
Um, this first report I want to go over real briefly is, uh, as you know, we're, we've, we're doing a lot of uh, projects this summer, painting, upgrading facilities, doing different things. Uh, of course, some of that got put on hold, but there are still a number of projects that are moving forward. And as we've uh, got into those projects, of course, there's things that pop up and you know, we, we need to make some on the fly changes. And that's, that's what this report is. It's just some, uh, some uh, amendments or some uh, change orders that were approved. And it's just bringing that to you to, to keep you informed of what's, what's being changed. There was a change at uh, Bronner Intermediate for some additional painting on the exterior. I believe it was some doors and some metal framing and some, maybe some columns out front that needed, needed painting that weren't in the original scope of work. That was a change of $9,231.96. Uh, and at Acton Elementary, uh, uh, that, that was some exterior. That's where the columns were, were at Acton. Uh, pressure wash and do some repair on some stucco work uh, before they actually painted that exterior stucco. So that's just an informational report there. That, that, that last change order was uh, $1,801.35. Moving to the next report is our March financial statement uh, for the period ending March 31st, 2020. Uh, the revenue collected to date was 94.53% of the budget amount compared to 90.58%. So we're a little bit ahead of where we were last year at this time and uh, uh, probably mostly tax collections. Some of that may be in some state revenue. Expenditures to date uh, represent uh, 54.42% compared to 54.62%. So very, very close on expenditures there. So we're, we're right on track. Uh, I, and that was at the end of March. So I, I fully expect next month, April, you may see the expenditures lag a little behind because we, we probably haven't been spending quite as much money on utilities and some other things since we're not at the campuses. So that may show up uh, at the end of uh, for the April report. Moving to the cash and investment report, ended March 31st, 2020. Uh, we had a total balance of $6,536.98 in uh, bank accounts and investment accounts through, uh, and, and through the MAP program. Uh, as we talk about just about every month, we kind of got excited when we got up to about a one and a half, two percent and now we're going back down the other way. It's, uh, as you know, that has all gone south as far as investments and uh, the things we're able to invest in, which are super, super conservative. Uh, we, we just don't get that greater return on things. But uh, we continue to try to do as, as good as we can. And then moving to the last report there is the categorical purchases report, which as you know, are those purchases that are uh, between 50 and 100,000 that we bring back to the board just to let y'all know uh, what was done the prior month. Uh, there was some uh, Chromebook purchases looked like for $55,146 that we purchased through an interlocal agreement. Uh, and that's just to inform the board of that purchase that was made. And that's all I have. Hey, Dovey, on these Chromebooks, uh, were these additional purchases due to the COVID-19 or were these planned purchases? Uh, maybe Amy can jump on and answer. Yeah, that would be an these Amy These were planned. Question. These were they made were prior to COVID. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Good timing. <laughs> okay. Does the board have any questions on uh, either the, the campus uh, project change orders or on any of the financial reports that Dobie just presented. I do want to extend, uh, Dobie's done a great job through this. Uh, just to let you know, he has got our FEMA application in, in, uh, in as well. So hopefully uh, any expenditures that we've, uh, we've had due to the coronavirus, we'll be able to recoup some of that money. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Glenn. And again, thank you, Dobie. Uh, at this time, uh, well, that's a report only. I'm sorry. Uh, no action necessary. Uh, we do have some action items related to personnel. Item number 10, uh, Dr. Glenn, would you like to say anything? Thank you, board. No, you have uh, before you the HR report uh, put together by uh, Mr. Jones and, and his staff. 
Uh, you also have uh, before you the contract recommendations uh, of our teaching and professional staff. Uh, it'll be the recommendation of the administration tonight that you approve both as presented. Okay, we have a recommendation uh, before us, board, uh, entertain a motion. Uh, President. Sorry, go ahead, Barbara. No, go ahead, Mike. I'm good. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we approve the staff recommendations and the uh, staff contracts as discussed in closed session. I'd like to second that. Thank you, Mr. Moore, for the motion, and uh, thank you, Mr. Swearingen, for the second on that. Uh, very important to keep our personnel in good shape uh, and, and always exciting to renew their contracts. Any other questions on that uh, or comment before we vote? All those in favor of accepting uh, the personnel movements as presented, raise your hand. And it looks like a unanimous uh, uh, vote. So that uh, Congratulations to all the staffs. I know those contracts will get out very, very quickly to the uh, various campuses. And uh, thank you to all the staff and employees uh, who, who are on the uh, meeting tonight and, and uh, we're listening in. Before we, we adjourn tonight's meeting, I did want to thank uh, some people behind the scenes, uh, Faith Barnes, uh, who always faithfully puts together our board packets and uh, uh, had a hand in how this meeting flowed tonight. And certainly Amy Wood, our technology director. Uh, and from my view, this meeting went seamless. Yes, thank you. Applause for Barbara Townsend, very appropriate. Amy, Amy, thank you so much for you and your staff who were involved in putting this meeting together tonight for the public. And then finally, Jeff Matter. Jeff, uh, our PIO, does a great job of communicating everything out and doing his part of these meetings. And, uh, uh, you know, we're all having to go through some extra gymnastics right now. Uh, to be like this uh, in the virtual world. So uh, again, thank you uh, to all the staff and the public and any parents and any community members who tuned in today uh, or maybe watching this later on. We appreciate your interest in Granbury ISD. We are so proud of this district and so terribly proud of all our people, every single person on the payroll of this district. So thank you. Keep up the good effort and the good fight. We'll get through this soon enough. Uh, and with that, I'm going to call uh, the meeting adjourned at 6.48 p.m. You guys take care and stay safe. God bless. Thank you, board. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. God bless everyone. All right.